Hello and welcome to Canvas Colors in the Moving City, a short little visual novel developed by Unfinished Circle, available on Itch.io. It's a second game from uh, the developer that I played a game of before in the past, which I believe was the little witchling Marjolaine, Marjolaine, right? Which, um, you know, again, I like the art. Basically, the, 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 I don't know what it is about the art. The art is just interesting to me. I don't know. It's just like this kind of like retro-ish anime art. But not, not so, you know, not so retro. There's literally that. Yeah, it has, has a like a uh, unique kind of like palette to it. I'm not sure how to describe it. But I like it, you know. Uh, that's the reason why I played the first game. However, I found the first game a little, I don't know. I don't say it was bad, but well, I mean, it, ironically or i was gonna say ironically i don't know if it's ironic actually but it, it felt a little unfinished basically because there's some character designs that uh, while they're cool when they show up and everything it just felt like story you know kind of like ended halfway and so it was it kind of like it didn't really end on a very um conclusive note and everything right and some of the characters in that uh in that visual novel um were just like we were like background characters that weren't finished i don't know it was weird but they had made another game and it also looks interesting i don't know if i feel the same way i i don't i wasn't sure if i would give it a shot because how i felt about the first game but you know what i'm gonna take the chance because uh again i like the art though when when there is art you know i do like it so let's try it out maybe this time it'll be more comprehensive i do know there's like you know two endings apparently but i guess we'll see anyway let's press start wow amazing and I, oh yeah i don't know if i said it but yeah, this visual novel is like, I guess they describe it as a slice of life story, you know? I guess we'll see what it is about, though. Anyway, let's see. Shanuis had many names. It was the marching state. It was a town of transients. Most simply called it the moving city. And it was here where a woman named Maggie made her work. Okay. Maggie was a postman and thus had many different responsibilities. You know, another delivery person, by the way. They do love delivery people, apparently. Presently, it was to deliver a dwindling bundle of letters in a bag which she carried. A trivial task were this not to be done in the moving city. After all, it would be a poor nickname if the buildings not all walk and wheel and limp and scamper about all on their own. As such, there was no fixed city plan. There's no main walkway or artery, and there were no streets, or permanent ones anyway. Okay, so it's, it's a hard job because literally... You can't you can't look on Google Maps for the address. It, it literally moves around. Is that how it works? So what had to turn their eyes up, which is what Maggie did. And this is how one navigates the city. Above the homes and the shops flutter, each a set of flags indicate what is where and who lives there. Or who lives there? Uh, I read that word. But anyway, Maggie stood in a square. The stones beneath her foot remain in place, in spite of the rumbling beneath her and beside her, and all about her visible radius. Buildings shifted and lumbered forward to the left and to the right, and some lagged behind and changed position uh, so as not to crash into another. From where she stood, she had a decent enough view of the place. There she remained, not wholly out of fatigue, but because she was looking for the flags to which she must deliver her remaining few letters. She squinted at the heights for a glimpse of her targets, keeping the contents of her satchel firmly in her mind. To home with a red flag with lion upon it moving city hmm. well i mean i imagine in this world there isn't just the moving city there's other cities maybe that she delivers to this is this is just one of her stops i guess the two shop green checkered flag pig sign of a door chanus or moving city or how do you say chanus also now letter is house blue red flag black blue moving site okay <laughs> another one is home ma ma mave how you say that mave mave i think it's a color mave flag over a green flag moving city she blew a bit of air out of her nose while one of her job functions was to deliver these letters certainly she wasn't expected to know the name of every color of the rainbow so maggie happened on the passerby and asked pardon me sir the man froze it was not the sight of the postman that stopped him but her race Plainly, Maggie was not human. Hmm. Is it because they're is it the pointy ears? Pointy ears equals elf, maybe. 
A point of the ears, tall stature, and a feathered head painted Maggie as one of the vain. I guess vain. Whatever that means. So she smiled at the man and maintained her distance. I'm having a small difficulty with some deliveries. Would you mind telling me what color Maeve is? Or Mav? I don't know. I don't know either, to be honest. Mav? Maeve? Uh, Mav? Maeve? Bleh, I can't pronounce it. I'm not sure. I think it's Maeve? I'm gonna look it up. You know, I'm gonna look it up right now. What, what is Mav? Let, let me just Google it. I'm gonna Google it real quick. Because I'm curious now. Define. Define this word, please, Google. Move. Move. Apparently it's called move? What? Move. Move, apparently, move. according to Google. Move. It's called move. It's like a pale purple color. Mm. Move. Okay, you learn something new every day. Move. The man took a half step backward as if he were to ma uh, were making to run off somewhere. But when he saw the vein give no reaction, he appeared to give that up. Either she will catch up to him or she posed no threat. It's a uh, kind of pink purple or light purple maybe. You're looking for He stopped himself. He was so old so it was entirely possible he was a war veteran. Yes, every old person is just a war veteran. <laughs> I don't know, maybe in this universe. And the scars of those who lived this history would always be fresher than those who did not. So the sight of a Venlesh postman before him was equally ridiculous as if it was terrifying. Yet he continued. Um, I never really liked her anyway. Thinks real highly of herself. Does she now? She's got a green flag too, so look for that. It's a plain green, then you'll see that move flag. Whatever she calls that nonsense. I have places to be, so I'm leaving. She thanked him for his time and looked again at the roots of the buildings. Soon enough, her target appeared to her between a four-legged tower and a squat, wheeled home with many windows. The occupants were already lowering bridges between the buildings. This was the other tricky part of being a postman in the moving city. A bridge could be many things. Therefore, when Maggie saw her path... Uh, therefore, when Maggie saw her path must cross? Or rather, therefore, when Maggie saw her path must cross two loosely forged wielded metal mosaics, uh, mosaics? Mosaics? She steeled herself and got into the business of advanced level walking. Ah yes, advanced level walking. Not simply basic level walking, advanced level. Each step produced a different creak. An almost musical effect that may have delighted her were the earth not rushing by 12 feet below. She followed the impulse to look down. Though in crossing only halfway, she saw the only thing keeping the bridge more to the other end were a couple of sacks of flour. No, she thought, this is not a bridge, this is an ordeal. When the square behind her shook, and it turned rattled the bridge, she voted immediately to sprint the remaining 10 feet. Her boots rattled the bridge with each pounding step, shaking the floor of flower bags bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. She arrived! Maggie took only a moment to steady her nerve and allowed a moment for her niece to cease her quivering. As she calmed herself, she thought to ex exact a fine on the owner of this plot of land, the building of this bridge for endangering the lives of any who thought to cross. She even thought to kick the bridge over the side for the betterment of everyone. Of both thoughts, she entertained neither and instead reset the sacks of flour to stabilize the path some and she continued on quickly. The woman found her target soon enough and with little further trouble. There was a green flag, there was the pink purple flag above it and that was all the verification she required after risking her life. Hmm. Maybe I didn't catch well, what she said but like What's below the the bridge? It, maybe it was just like... I was, I was, it's hard to imagine this because it's like a moving city. Everything's moving all the time, I guess. Because when you think moving city, in my mind anyway, usually in a lot of other worlds, other, like other like um, uh, pieces of fiction, you think the entire city moves in uh, um, together, right? They, they move in sync to like other places. But in this, apparently in this moving city, everything moves. All the little pieces keep moving all the time you know so i was wondering you know if she fell like where would she fall in some water or like or like literally you know like a really really long fall like a cliff maybe not sure anyway typically typically she would ask the recipient for some sort of identification as it was her job as postman to confirm people who they say they are it was her job as well to check up on them and to investigate ill goings on and apprehend criminals and their dealings at her discretion. Ah yes, she's also super detective at the same time. But this time, she merely wanted to be done with her delivery so she could pound back a tall mug of ale and relax. Yes. So she dropped the delivery in a little letter box by the door. That was the end of it. Now remain three letters. 
She found a shop with the green checkered flag first, which turned out to be a pub, and she made a mental note to visit them later, bidding them that luck that the letter was not a bill. She found the house with the blue red flag and the black door next, and the recipient was a rather crotchety old woman who threatened violence upon the man who wrote the letter. She requested Maggie stick around while she wrote her replied that she did not in fact owe the man any money, and that was a bet made over 30 years ago, so it was past time to let that go. The old woman made sure to spit into the envelope before heading it to Maggie. <laughs> okay. Her letter rivaled the previous as an exercise atrocity penmanship, made worse by the haste in which she had written the thing and the gob of spittle that had begun to leak through. Maggie reminded her to attach the proper postage, and she headed off in directions all the while keeping watch for the final home. Okay. The postman dropped off the damp envelope without ceremony and without so much as a knock on the door. Best not get caught up in this mess, she thought. But then there was the final letter. It had been in hours and its owners were nowhere in sight. She checked the address again. Red flag with lying upon it. Nothing of the sort appeared to her. Maggie found a high plaza surrounded by a dense cluster of buildings, most of which moved by a mechanical leg, or rather moved by mechanical leg. She watched for a moment. It was a small wonder none of them stepped on one another or tripped over another's legs. Rather, it was more like an intricate dance than a uh, group of homes and businesses marching aimlessly through the desert. Okay, so like a desert. So I don't know, it's hard to imagine, but I guess like, okay, so it's like a desert area in the, in the surrounding environment. From her vantage point, she had a better view of the city. Certainly, there were red flags, but most appeared plain and the remainder of none appeared to be the one she sought. Was it possible the house had fallen behind? They all seemed tethered to one another, moving together as a school of herrings. Perhaps, she giggles to herself, a larger house had eaten it. Ah oh, yes, num num. Excuse me, miss. Maggie caught the attention of women passing by. I'm looking for a home of red flag, there's a lion on it. Right, I don't know that one, sorry. She marched on her way, so Maggie found another person. Sir, could you help me find someone? Okay, just, what is this, who's this guy? I'm in a hurry, postman. Will this take long? I'm looking for a house with a red flag that should have a lion on it. Can I help you? Good day. Not like anime people. Just like, I don't know, anyway. And this could do for a greater part of an hour, and see, none knew or cared to let slip where the house might be. Maggie even considered covering her feathers and hiding her ears, as if that were the source of the problem. But it was more likely the people around her simply did not know. This was a city after all, who could keep track, who memorized the numbers of buildings on the lane. So she switched tactics to put on her thief-taker's demeanor. She put her hand to her sword and stopped the first person she saw. I guess, act like a police officer, now make everything, you know, go well. Sir, I need to speak with you for a moment regarding a case. A postman's job was not just to deliver parcels and correspondence. A postman's job was, uh, or rather, oh, oh shit, that's the first sentence that continues. There were also guards and hunters of criminals, and could even call, be called on as a militia. As such, each postman carried a sword at their waist. Okay, it's very triangular sword. She drew her weapon on the man for a bit of intimidation, better to play the part of a mildly in unhinged lawbringer. Ah yes, of course. Just like, you know, just like pull out your gun and just start asking questions at everybody. That's how it works, right? The man's eyes widened, he stopped everything he was doing. A home has gone missing lately, and I suspect something odd afoot. Do you know anything of the sort? A uh, home missing? <laughs> Small face. Now, not that I can recall. I mean, there was that one house a couple days ago that broke down. The house broke down. Yeah, it was just a small one, you know? And so we, I, I mean, other people, they, they tried helping her out. Must have been a bad furnace or something, so the people offered to help and she just didn't say anything. Looked like she lost a big bet. Eventually, she told everyone to back off and that was the end of it. Well, that's all I know. Did this house have a red flag? What? I don't know. Maybe. I don't remember that well. She slackened her stance and nodded to let him leave. If this was indeed the place she was looking for, she would need to hire a carriage to backtrack the city's path. While the city plodded along, it was not so slow that her task would not take hours longer. This was proving far more difficult than it needed to be. Maggie resolved to transfer out of the city once the last delivery was done. But she would, be, she would again be taking Vale further from her home. She was distracted for a moment thinking of the young girl that traveled with her. Vale had followed Maggie around for at least a month now, 
and she was beginning to wonder if the girl was at all homesick, or even thought to write her family. But that was a question for when she was around. And so Maggie found another poor pedestrian to interrogate and set about looking for her charge, okay? Apparently she's... she has a sidekick. We did see two people on the main menu. Anyway. She found Vale in the crowded plaza, interesting a... or interesting? No, entrancing a small group of magic and parlor tricks. She will briefly conjure up a glowing pale light about her fingers and once the interest the crowd was locked, place her hands together and pretend to separate her thumb from her hand. Oh yes, amazing. While the group gasped while the remainder clapped, dropping small coins in the wicker basket nearby. Once they were gone, Veil vale huffed. But upon seeing Maggie approach, she brightened right up. Okay. How'd it go? They looked impressed. We would have impressed even my family. I did the glowy thing in my hand and pretend to remove my thumb. And before that, I pretended to float. Did you see how impressed with my magic they were? And they dropped a whole bunch of coins into the basket. I think it's like that thing where you throw flowers at a play. It's... it's a version of that, yeah. So I guess you could say I'm getting better with this magic stuff, don't you think? I think so. Maybe a traveling magician will take you as an on... as an apprentice. Vail puffed up a bit in pride, turning her head to hide the blush. He shall have to wait. I am on a mission. Anyway, all done? Not quite. We have to hire a carriage for the last one. Apparently houses can break down, and for some reason the lady who lives in the house wished not for help. So we have now a several hours ride ahead of us. Vale flicked a few coins over her basket like they were ants on a pastry. She then took the basket and followed Maggie. The pair crossed several bridges to a ferry service which Maggie had located earlier. They found the shop owner and watched Maggie flash her postman's badge. He bade them follow downstairs to a low balcony where they saw a trio of carriages each hooked up to a craggy stone golem. Okay, so just, I mean, just like the previous game, by the way, it seems like this, this world is like kind of like a steampunk-ish magic fantasy kind of universe. I think, you know, I don't know. I, I wonder if they're inspired by anything, you know? I'm just thinking of like MMOs, you know? MMOs are like, usually have a lot of big established worlds. It's probably one that's kind of like like that, you know, but I mean a lot of animals are kind of like that they, they, You know a lot of animals in general kind of have this thing where like it's technically a medieval fantasy But yet they have a lot of modern convenience to it, you know, because in real life in real medieval times It's uh, it's not that great, you know, relatively it's, it's not very convenient in many ways And yet in the MMO, you know, obviously it's just a lot of just a lot of modern conveniences a lot of like technological progress uh, that they have on par even better than you know in real life and yet they're still like in the weird medieval aesthetic but anyway so this is a golem it's a funny looking golem uh the golem stood idle like large statues staring to the receding horizon with no apparent sentience the shop owner scribbled something on a piece of paper unhitched the skull cap of one of the golems slipped the note inside and closed it up soon the golem shivered to life and maggie and Vale boarded the cab and they set off wow Time to move. Yeah, okay. It was hard to tell, but it really is like a desert area. I thought it was like a foresty area, you know? I mean, there are some trees here and there, but mostly it's barren rock, I guess. As they sat, Vale took out a small field guide and flipped quickly to a specific page, showing it to Maggie. Interesting, um, interesting uh, way to show the portraits, by the way. You know, it's kind of like asymmetric. So it's like there's certain like little... I don't know what we call it, but like a certain perspective to it, you know? Hmm. Did you remember to ask anyone if they seen this flower? She turned her book of horticulture to face the postman, pointing to a long stem flower with little bell-shaped blooms which hung as if they were writing. Or not writing, wilting, rather. There was next to it a cutaway diagram of the flower and a picture of its leaves, about which were scrawled notes in some human dialect Maggie could not read. No one's heard of it, that I could tell. Hmm. Mom says they're found to the east, but she's only got a faint reckoning of exactly where. Mayhaps we're not far enough? Could be. And that reminds me, Vale. Have you written your family yet? Vale was silent and turned to her book. You know, it's no good going so far and so long without even a word you're alright. They'll be worried about you. Vale buried her face in the book now, and Maggie elected to drop the matter. It had been several weeks since she had contacted her own family. Perhaps it was hypocrisy of her to press Vale into it. I've been on lots of journeys. Mom knows I'm okay, and Dad isn't all worried. 
da da as in like dad but like da it's kind of weird yeah i don't know i think i find it kind of weird to call your dad da without the d you know anyway and da is not a word unless well i don't know well it's not no no that's, i was gonna say like mom is like capitalized but no no that's because of this uh i mean it's right after a period that makes sense i was wondering if da is like capitalized for some reason like it's a name but uh, anyway uh, mom knows I'm okay and dad isn't all worried. I've been away from home lots of times. The girl set her book down, though she continued to stare at his pages. I just don't think I'm yet good enough at writing letters. Does that make any sense? A little. Maggie smiled and turned to look at the landscape rolling slowly by. Uh, already the clatter and thump of the city began to fade. Yeah, you notice about the city is like slightly moving. It's literally moving. Amazing. Oh, it's gone. Can I hold your sword? Maggie started awake. Was I asleep? I think so. So, I'm sorry. Can I hold your sword? Do all postmen carry these? All postmen do carry these, yes. But we cannot permit anyone other than the postman to carry them. It's an insult to a uniform for one. I could get in trouble for another and you could hurt yourself. I'll be careful. Sorry, Vale, no. I... I'll bet you use it all the time. I have several times, yes. Mostly to encourage people to make wise decisions. Yes, I use it to intimidate people. <laughs> Stars seemingly appear in the young girl's eyes. Have you ever fought? She toned her voice down low as if the next word might conjure up something evil. Monsters? Ah, yes. Have you ever fought level 1 slimes? And you fight them and then you, they drop like 10 gold and they be, and you know, and you get like 2 experience. No, um, once. Vale dropped her book to the floor. Well, it was a difficult day I struggled well to forget. I think best not repeat it outside some very thick walls. And after many drinks, she muttered to herself, I wouldn't be afraid of monsters if I was you. You'd scare them away before they got in the sword distance. Maggie looked out the window, hoping Vale would find something else to ask about. And Vale then started herself with a realization. I just remember I got these earlier. She produced some little hand pies and had two to Maggie. One's sweet and one's not. I'm eating a sweet one first. It's got the seeds on top. Maggie started the opposite way and found it was filled with a jam of bacon and onion. Ugh. A bit of potato here and there. Okay, well, I mean... I mean, when you think of pies and pastries, you think, like, it's, you know, sweet. But, like... I guess it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Her stomach was quite out of room before she was half-finished the pie. Hmm. Do all the Venelish become postmen's? I have not seen many, though there may be a complicated reason behind it. Vale left it at that and tucked into her second pie. How old do you all really get? I'm not certain. No one really told me. Do you know how old humans get? Nope, but I hear the vein get older. I mean, it's a, it's a fantasy trope. You know, the elves live longer than humans. Perhaps I'll find out. You know, that, that's just the case, I guess. That's what elves are. You know, they're just better in every way than humans. And that's basically it. They just have pointy ears, you know? So how much further are we to this last house? Can't say. I just know to follow the trail back until we hit it. It broke down two days ago, so I've gathered. And judging by how fast the city moves, we'll approach it in a couple of hours. Do the houses break down a lot? Some do. Usually the community seems to come together, get them run and up and running. But this person didn't want to help for some reason. Maybe they thought they could fix it themselves. I broke my dad's favorite shovel once. He said I could, he could fix it, but I told him I would do it. Since I broke it, it's my responsibility to make it right. That's what he taught me. Vale beamed in pride, remembering the heated lesson. Did you fix it? I broke it more, so I got him a new one. But it's fine, so he likes the new one better. Maybe we should help this person fix their house. So we break it and get her a new one. Well, no. I think because the houses are run by magic that I can fix them by magic, right? If I try to fix a non-magic thing by magic, then it explodes. I don't think a magical host will explode. Let's hope not. They have thus passed in silence. Vale had fallen asleep some minutes ago and Maggie was finishing her second pie, which she guessed was filled with dates and was as rich as the first had been. Hmm. So the first pie, no, okay, so the first pie was filled with, like, onion and bacon. Was that supposed to be sweet? I don't know. It's like a jam. It's weird. It's just weird to me, man. She decided it was a poor idea to let Vale choose lunch. 
Even still, in spite of her overfull stomach and sore backs after hours of sitting, Maggie was content. The red rocks and wiry vegetation that crept by were calming, and so was the knowledge that she would soon be finished with her job. And so Maggie hummed a tune to herself, and before long, Vale stretched and groaned. Well, what's that? Hmm? What's that song? It's a marching tune. Did you learn that in the army? Maggie let out a small laugh. You overguess at how old I am, Mel, and besides, one of my commanding officers taught it to me. Do you know the words? I do, but I'm afraid it would make for poor listening. Vel grumped the Venelation woman and said, You're far too serious, Maggie. Maggie felt a little hurt, so she turned back the window and sighed. And she sang slowly this. I am singing of a song and like a... I mean, I guess you follow the melody right now. Boop, 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 boop. It always happens, by the way. In the visual now is no voices. There's always, I sing this part, you know? How are you supposed to sing it? Was that the melody, actually? Or maybe that was the melody. You Sometimes it doesn't actually have the melody. I don't know, I, I missed this. I don't know how you're supposed to sing it, but like... From Barker's cry heard in the square To any able lad who dare For noble cause in hearty pay over the hills and far away. Over the hills round the fanes. From comely shore to farther bay. Our king commands and we obey. I don't know, it's hard to, like, I can't follow the melody as it happens, you know. <laughs> Over the hills and far away. From home to fire through smoke and smell. Companions all around me fell For kin and king and country way Over the hills and far away I wonder if that's a real, a real song, you know, in real life? As she sang the chorus once more, Veil pulled out a little notebook and scrolled the words as quick as she could Oh, there's more 90 days and maybe more we met the foe at every ford. No bitter end as we see today. <laughs> Over the hills and far away. I don't know. Again, I, I can't sing a melody that I don't know. So it's just really awkward. Vail was writing in a mad fury and seemed to catch by the time, uh, catch by the time Maggie had finished the chorus again. How many battles have we seen? To find our sovereign's head a cleaved. Our lords are fled, our king is slain. Over the hills and far away. Over the hills and gone away. Through sodden field and salted plain. The queen commands and we obey. Over the hills and far away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why did they just do that yet? Anyway. Good. I don't know. That was that was poor singing. I guess I didn't have to sing it, but well, I don't know if you call it singing though. Anyway. Here Maggie's voice cracked and she held back the next lines. Indeed she turned back to the window embarrassment, ceasing to sing or even speak further. Okay, that's what it was, you know, the, actually the piano. That was intentional. You're right, Maggie. That was a bit sad. Was that how the war with the Vane went? Is that why all the older folk are so cross of you? So yeah, apparently, I, I assume the song is like the actual background lore. <laughs> what happened in the war, I guess. A bunch of people fought each other, I assume. That's it. Roughly. And people are fools. You weren't there, were you? And it isn't like it was your fault. All the battles and stuff didn't go all the way they should have. Oh, hey, Bloxy Moon. Great singing. I, I disagree, but, you know, thanks. Thanks anyway. Maggie kept quiet, searching for words. Perhaps it doesn't matter. Anyway, we arrived. The carriage halted and Maggie groaned out of her seat, stretching her back while she set but, uh, set but, but, why I say, why am I saying that w w w weird? <laughs> like, she set but, no, she set boot, she set boot upon the dusty earth. Evening Wayne on a lone house party. Or house party? Why am I? I'm just reading words wrong. Uh, evening Wayne on a lone house partly listed to the red dirt. About it was planted many small succulents and desert plants in the early stages of cultivation. 
and up top, a red flag fluttered on the cooling air. There was a lion on it. Okay, well, that's the thing we're looking for. We're just going to turn back around, aren't we? Yes, but I think I'll check up on this person. We at least deserve to know the face of one who, for whom we travel far to see. Wouldn't you agree? Vail nodded and followed along, only to become distracted by a flowering cactus. She took out her notebook and started to sketch the flower as Nagi knocked at the door. There was a soft voice from inside which answered. When the woman inside finally opened the door to face her... Okay, it's another anime girl. Good. Maggie's heart iced over. Uh-oh. Maggie. Okay. Amarella. I guess they know each other. Vale looked up from a distraction to see a human woman embracing Maggie. The vain woman was too shocked to respond at first, but when she had back her senses, she returned the hug. Vale approached the pair and they separated. The human woman looked up to Maggie, committing her face to memory. Maggie? Oh, Vale. This is my sister. Amarella, our oh, sister. Amarella nodded the young girl. And this is Vale. She travels with me. You're not a vein. The woman paid no heed to Vale's comment. Hmm. She's not an elf, I guess? Uh, hello, Kokian. By the way, I, I have, I don't know if you, uh, you know, I have this like, I mentioned it in last stream, but you know, just to say it again, I have, I have a chat overlay. See, it's like, the messages appear on stream. Amazing. Um, Hopefully the resolution is good. I, I apparently I, uh, I was told that the the text you know was a little squished, so it made it a little bit bigger. I don't know if it helps, but anyway. The woman paid no heed to Vio's comment. I was only to have a light dinner tonight, but I'm hoping for a change. And I have a little cake of some vanilla ale. I've long, long sought an excuse to tap. Come, you two. Maggie hesitated, holding one of her arms and shifting her weight between each leg. That won't do, Maggie. I insist. Fine, but first, Maggie wrapped out her final letters of the day, all addressed to Amarilla, who took them with a curtsy. Will the postman be asking how my day has gone? Amarilla. Fine, fine. These will be my delivery changes, I expect. Nothing interesting to open, I'm sure. She seized Maggie's wrist and dragged her inside. They'll follow as if she were a shadow. Hmm. It was mentioned, yeah, that they were sisters, but she wasn't really a, you know, a, a, what, what was it? Like a vein? Which is in this universe basically an elf. I, I assume is maybe they're you know they're not biological sisters. You know maybe they're like you know uh, adopted, like they were adopted by someone and then they're sisters in that sense. Uh, anyway, they enter the home. The floor is level in spite of the slight angle of the house from the outside. There was a large hearth at the far end of the main room where the makings of an evening's fire lay just unlit. There was a small table by the hearth and only a single intricate chair sat there. The table itself was covered in plant clippings and several half-full earthen pots, which Amarella quickly swept away, leaving the tabletop bare. She left Maggie and Vel there and hustled into the kitchen, calling out to them. Do make yourselves comfortable. I'll be but a moment. And indeed, she was out quite soon, with a couple of boards of some sausages and a wheel of cheese. She then set them upon the table while Vale found herself a tall box to sit upon, scooting it up to the table. Maggie, light the fire, please. Maggie? Has a choice. Oh no, it's a real visual novel. Uh, how do I save? Uh, that's a log, but I can I save here. Oop. Out of it matters, but... Because um, I don't know. I don't know if it's like it's going to be a thing where you got like, you know, the choices actually matter, and then I... Uh, steer you towards like a particular ending because i do know this game does have at least two you know two endings um sure i'll just i'll like I'll, I'll light the fire i guess i'll just follow amarilla's instructions Oop. maggie grabbed a flint of steel from the top of the hearth and knelt down to begin her assigned task she of course had the fire going in a little time amarilla nodded in appreciation so Amarilla sliced the sausages, humming to herself a tuneless song. I presume to be your last stop of the day, I take it. You are. What a wonderful coincidence this is. I had no idea you had left home. Mother and father did not reveal this to me. It is a recent change, and one which has proved most satisfactory, I must say. I forgot to be here one moment. Amarilla wiped her hands on her dress and patted her off in another room. She seems happy. In spite of her situation, yes. 
I think she missed you. Yes, well, I did too. I think I'll write, write to my family tonight. It was said that Amarilla arrived with a small keg, coming while she set her sideways upon an upturned crate. She hurried back into the kitchen and soon returned with a spigot and a wooden mallet. She spit, or she spit? No, I read the spigot word first. No, she set the spigot against a disc of cork, which stuck out from the face of the keg, and taking the mallet, she struck the spigot to drive it into the keg. It took a several whacks and a low beer spilt on the floor, but that was an unavoidable casualty. My father disapproved your experience of such a task. It was he who taught me, Maggie, but that was after you went off to your postman's training. Oh, but I guess. Some men in Chanel's taught me the craft. I attended the bar for some weeks until my little exile. From some place, Amarilla produced a trio of mugs. Two she filled near the brim for the third she dress of ale. Yeah, I wonder. And for the young lady. Fine vanilla of ale. Amarilla paused for a moment and looked to Maggie. Just a bit to taste. Okay, is this is this her spot? How old is she? I can't tell. She's shorter than everybody else. So I don't know if she's like a kid. I have no idea. Indeed. So Amarilla dripped a bit of the keg into the final mug and hanged off the veil. She took the mug with both hands and referenced in all of the ruby red liquid within. Dad was always on about the legendary Vanash Ale. Bleh. And she took a sip. And she took a gulp and she screwed up her face and set down the mug in disappointment which had Maggie and Amarilla laughing. They clapped together their mugs and took a long drink each, and you set down the mug with a satisfied sigh. I needed that. Vanilla, sh vanilla Spear is disgusting. <laughs> His taste developed with age, both of the beer and the one who drinks it. I always hear about that, yeah. Uh, you know, just in general, <laughs> you know, uh, a beer just tastes bad, but you gotta drink more of it, you know, then it tastes good. It's like, huh? How about you just don't drink it? Anyway. Here, here. At least some, some alcoholic drinks, I guess, are kind of like that, as far as I know. She raised the, her mug and Amarilla obliged, and the sisters finished her drinks, but Maggie was only just as soon as. You refill those then, and I should get something more palatable for the young lady. Just yes, give me a soda, please. That'd be better. You have a soda? <sighs> Amarilla wandered back to the kitchen and returned with a jug of some red juice and poured a bit for veil, topping it off with a little bit of ale. Ale and veil. For luck. In this form, Vale found the drink much more agreeable. It was a little sweet, tasted much less of the yeasty, fizzy brew she had earlier. And then Amarilla took a seat at the table, continuing to slice the summer sausages she had brought in. But Maggie went in quickly for a bit of cheese. How's the life of a post been? Have you delivered some particularly important correspondence of late? I did not read the letters, Amarilla. But there have been some of the less private mind. Though the people with loose tongues tend to be given the least important or interesting information. If their superiors are wise, then the wisdom runs wide, as far as I've heard. Anyway, mail's not all I do. Okay, or rather, oh, not okay, it's oh. Oh, is this all I've ever seen you at? Granted, it's not the... Maggie leans with the, her drink, searching for words, until Vale broke into a whisper. Did you know? She fought bandits once. The news snapped up all the Amaral's attention and her face darkened. She set her knife upon the table, put her full attention to Maggie, seeking her eyes. Maggie kept in her mug. Did she now? How does the tale go? Four men accosted us on the road to Chanel's and I dispatched them. Maggie, don't be so boring. Amarilla searched for Maggie's eyes, but her gaze was avoided. There were four of them, big and ugly and mean looking, and they wanted the contents of Maggie's satchel, right? Ah, yes. Four of them are really me- Well, there's one of them is just a kid, what? So Maggie said, You may not have this, it is official postman business, or something like that. And of them, he was their leader, I think, because he was the biggest of them all, he said, Wrong answer, girly. I don't care if you're a bloody vein or not, there's four of us. So Maggie said back, Hmm, only four? As like, anime music plays. And she put her hand on her sword like this, and one of the guys, he lost his nerve there and took off. She didn't even have to draw it or anything. But the remaining three just laughed at him and yelled some bad stuff after him, and they were all like, more profit for us! And that's why Maggie told me to run, and she drew out her sword. And so Vale hopped out of her seat and displayed her best approximation of Maggie's stance. Amarilla had her hands on her cheeks. But I ain't nearby though, so I wasn't worried. So they all charged, she kicked the nearest one to shins, and hit another one of the... The handle. The, the pommel. Oh yes. Uh, Blo uh, Bloxymon, the art looks unique. Yeah, that's that's a part of the reason why I wanted to check this out. You know, I like the art. 
The our daughter looks nice. All right, pommel. You she she ended them rightly. You know she pulled out the pommel and like like screwed it off and threw it at them, and then they all died. No, um. And the last fellow, he dropped his club and ran away too. So Baggy approached the leader and she put his sword to his throat like this. Vale grabbed the stick from nearby surface and pointed it downward at what could have been a defeated villain lying belly up at her mercy. She had her most determined glare pointing at him. And she said, I ought to put a, the pair of you to death and save everyone the trouble. And they're all like, ah, sorry, we'll never do it again. He was just gonna knock yours out and take your shit. <laughs> or shite, rather. I, I guess they're all, I don't know, they're Australian or... Well, who says shite in like an accent? I guess, I don't know, like an English accent in general? Anyway, no harm to you beyond that, uh, miss. No, sorry, I mean, my lord. And you know what she did? She knocked them out with a pommel and we're on our way. She edited them rightly. Most impressive. Father was correct to place you among their lot, I see. Maggie fell into her mug, hiding expression of a swig of beer. Vale beamed and the room was silent after that, if not for the crackling fire. Vale shrunk back a little and though she knew she hadn't done nothing wrong, it felt as if she had. The sisters were silent for a time, eventually Amarilla slid her mug across the table, knocking it against Maggie's and tossing it back. Maggie took a deep breath and did the same. Then let us speak of lighter things than high women and endangered children. Tell me, Vale, how'd you come to join my sister's wanderings? I was looking for a flower. Oh! Vale fumbled over her bag for a little book and flipped to a page she had folded over and thrust it atop the table for Amarella to see. And this is the one. Maggie says she helped me find it. Have you seen it anywhere? I'm afraid I have not. My cultivations are all things of the scrubland currently. All that red juice. It's from a cactus not too far from here. I took the fruits of it. Cactuses make fruit? Hmm, do they? I know they make flowers. I also know that if you're really desperate, you know, in, in the desert, Somehow, if you're like, uh, uh, if you're like super dehydrated, you know, and then you don't have any access to water, you can't like cut open a cactus and drink its juice. Though it's not like, you know, it's not, uh, ideal, you know, because sometimes cactus juice can cause, uh, some problems. But anyway, depending on the cactus. They all make sorts of things, though I must say, stings in the hand are the most common. Veil eyed the bandage on her wrist. And some of the big ones have water inside them, though you shouldn't drink it as it doesn't agree with the stomach. I know this from personal experience, so you can take this advice as paramount. Yeah, you see, that's what I said. Exactly. <laughs> of course, if you're properly prepared for a trip, you shouldn't need to forage for water out here. But given no other option, you should seek a plant with red, flu uh, red fruits on it. You know a lot about the scrap. I've been industrious my time out here. Maggie finally perked up some and brought a question. Speaking of how, how did you come by this plot of land? I heard from the townsfolk that a house had broken down. Indeed. And that the owner refused everyone's aid. Yes, well. Uh, would you like some cheese, Vale? I'm very fond of this variety. I think you should like it too. <laughs> just, just like completely changed the topic. Maggie raised a brow. Perhaps this was something her sister preferred not to talk about. Or perhaps this was a problem of her doing. Regardless, she let the questioning fall away while Amarella dotted on unveil. Mm, excuse me. Dotted? Is it dotted by way? Doted. Dotted? Dotted unveil? Anyway. Perhaps more beer would reveal what she secreted away, Maggie thought, and she topped off the mugs. I guess more beer. Everyone gets drunk. Night had fallen on the land. The insides of the home were filled with laughter and bold resolutions as one often makes after several drinks. Vale sat on the crate by the table as her sisters stumbled through a cheerful drinking song, led along by Maggie who had an easier time remembering how it went. And the song ended and Amarilla fell laughing to her chair. Eh, I've not heard that one in quite some time. At the bars here make terrible songs. Always the same three ones over and over. Again, as if they'd no imagination, someone ought to teach them something new. They should. Simply ask the postman, I suppose. Even the postman, Maggie. Even the postman are so, so boring. You live in such a vibrant place, but as it's as if their minds are full up on how they might get to work five minutes from now. And they have no creativity except for how to walk. Walk. You know, to, 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 the, to where they're going. 
the building's all moving, Maggie. Amarillo tried in vain to pour some more beer, but the pair had drained it quite thoroughly. I fear a cake has run dry. Ah, my fear is venlish red. Ven- I can't say that. I don't, I don't know how to say that correctly. Venlish? Venlish? I mean, it's a made-up word, I think. Venlish red. My cherished and most fondest friend. Though empty mug has brought me sorrow, I shall regret you on the morrow. Amarella snorted and giggled wildly and Vale was becoming a little irritated with his sister. It was as everything said was funny, though nothing really was, and Maggie was occupied completely with her own drink, seeming to shut everything else out. Vale could not even go to direct the conversation to something more interesting. Beer may fools everyone, but at least the mood was light. Maggie, Maggie, when you get back to that, that blasted town, you find the nearest pub you can and sing them a new song because they could all use it. Whichever should I pick? Something in Ven Venlish. Give them a real shock. I need only stone the pub for that. Yes, well. Amarillo threw her hand up as if that was to get her point across. Hmm. Okay. A veil can choose to do something. She can ask how Van and Human came to be sisters, or she could take a broke and go outside for a bit, I guess. Isn't the house moving though? Or maybe it's not moving? Because how can you go outside when everything's moving? You should probably get you know get stuck outside, but I don't know. That's probably not, not how it works. Maybe she's she would be standing on like the uh what do you call it? I wanna say balcony, but not balcony. It's on the like same floor, right? So what do you call that? The terrace? Was that a terrace? Anyway, um, I I'm gonna say that. I don't know. I have no idea how these choices affect the story, but I'm thinking like maybe depending on who you focus on, you know, maybe that affects like the overall story. So, maybe, so uh, I already did the first option to like follow Amarella's instructions. So maybe if I do more of Amarella's or anything that relate to Amarella, maybe it'll be like an Amarella thing, but. I guess we'll see. Anyway, so I'm gonna do more, more, more do this one. So as veil, veil, as how a vein and a human came to be sisters. Oop. She was curious. It was then Veil decided she was having no more of these drunken ramblings, and she asked a question that had tugged her at her for a while now. Why aren't you a vein? I am. Can't you tell, girl? I was wondering as well. I mean, she doesn't have the elf ears, but she's purple. Or she, well, didn't they mention like it was, uh, the color was called Move, you know, Move, M-A-U-V-E, Move. She is that color, you know, but anyway. Uh, but apparently she says, she's, she is, is she joking? I don't know, I am, can't you tell, girl? Amarella grabbed a pair of loose leaves and stuck them behind her, uh, above her ears, then tried desperately and unsuccessfully to hold in her laughter. This had Maggie chuckle a bit. Okay, so she's not, she's not. To clarify, Vale, I am a vein only by birth. I was adopted to Amarilla's home. Okay. I'm sorry. It was lost so long ago, not to worry. Father found her when she was out hunting Ma on her lands. She was remarkably thin. You could see the bones on her, which I thought rather unsettling at the time. I was wondering for a time. Anyway, her father found this dreadfully malnourished vain girl one day and brought her home. And mother was initially hesitant, you know? She f you find a foreign child, you'll want to find their mother first and foremost, especially so, especially so for one of the feathered folk. So we clothed her and bathed her, and none claimed her, so we kept her. You speak of me as a stray dog. You'll not complain to me, sister. I fed you soup in those days, so, so yes, some gratitude is warranted. Now be silent, lest I reveal all the embarrassing details of your upbringing, which I should per proceed to do so anyway. Maggie flipped the crumb of cheese at her sister, which bounced off her cheek without so much as a flinch. So, given our resident vein was to be one of the family, I took upon myself to treat her as a proper lady of the house. Firstly, a lady does not speak, lest wisdom or counsel allow it. She took quite well to this lesson, though gives neither wisdom nor counsel when asked. Not wholly a success, but I was a, I was eight or nine, expecting perfection of a child. Pish. So, well. Uh, Oh, is it pish? <laughs> By the way, is it pish? Pish? That's the sound, right? Like, ps or push. Oh, anyway, I don't know what sound to make of that. Anyway, I don't know why I'm stuck in that. So, you're a nobility? Why do you live in his house? It seemed as if for the brief briefest of seconds, Amarella winced. Well, one such as I, who stands out even without being the girl of the Vanlish sister, should get away. 
I want you to borrow their home and journey once in a while keep the mind from getting too stuffy, wouldn't you say? I've been on lots of journeys, yes. Vale added with a tone of pride. Truly then, I must be less well-traveled than you, young miss, as I've been from the home only thrice. This being the third time, though it has been the shortest. I've been out. Vale went over the memories in her head. There was that time her father had taken family to see a group of mummers performing a mile outside of the village, which was itself miles from her home. Her father had borrowed a horse to carry them to that. And there was a time her mother and father accompanied her to the woods in search of flowers she had spotted in her book. And as well, there was a mill several miles from home she had had to sneak out to get to, and her parents had yet to find out about that. That is a play from your paws you have me beat. It is odd indeed for a child to have traveled more so than I. I must change this. But who's gonna look after your plants? Well, I meant not that I would travel anytime soon. And apart from that, they were around before me, and they'll be around when I'm gone. This is the way of things. We humans are very much transient in this new world. Vale did not understand the last part so much, so she looked at Maggie. But I'll bet Maggie has us both beat. Maggie finally looked out for a mug disrupted of her thought. Hmm? You've been lots of places, right? Indeed. An obvious defeat to us both. Is that a complaint? Only that you cease to elaborate fully of your quest is. But more is there to say. When all the leads bl uh, when all the leads? No, when all the lands bleed into one another. Nothing perhaps stands out among them? Some things do. Amarella huffed and it was plain to her the conversation has reached its end. Amarella, you say you are simply on vacation, but I feel you are not being entirely truthful. Nonsense. One does not begin a garden in a temporary place, and furthermore, your home breaks down and you refuse to help to get it running again. It isn't like you'd leave a thing broken and simply adapt to it. Is something the matter? Unease crossed her sister's face, and Maggie need only press her further. But did she really feel it necessary? Would this not create some sort of strain before between them? Well, we have a choice again. Because we have a choice, I'm gonna save again. Like so. Also, I have a bit of a stuffy nose. I don't know why I have a stuffy nose. I think it's. I think today's like pretty cold outside. I think that's why. Uh, it's, it's like the weather. I don't know say. It was. It was. It was. It was like pretty warm yesterday. Now it's like really cold. Anyway, I feel like. Blow my <laughs> anyway, uh, let's continue. Uh, let's see. Yes, let us press our sister. Let's ask what's going on. I want to know. Yet her chest was hot and she pressed her questions anyway. Sister, please, tell me what's the matter. Are you sick? In trouble? Nothing of the sort. Nothing at all. It's... Amarilla waved her hand as if to shoo away the question, but she slumped back into her seat. Thoughtful and as quiet as she ever been, and at length she spoke. Have you ever known to be a person known for another's fame? Is your identity tied to that of your, of your family? Can one truly be their own person? I don't understand. I know this because you know me as Amarella, your sister, and mother and father know me as Amarella, their, da their daughter. Yet to everyone else, I'm the woman with the vanished sister. At home, I've ceased to be me, so much as me and you. If you follow, and it's this fact that vexes me. You have all understand that I should source my frustration and ignorance of others when they lie before me each day. I could go to the market and walk among our gardens, and the servants and common folk all think one and the same. When my identity relies upon the existence of another person, I fear I may lose my sense of self. Or perhaps it was never particularly strong to begin with. Maggie said nothing, but the quizzical frown on her face spurred Amarilla to continue. I wish for solitude, as a means of separation definition. I... Are you throwing away your family? No, dear sister, nothing so extreme. I seek exile for a time, to become me, for the thankful signs missing at home. The country here is so qu very quiet and peaceful. A difficult land to be sure, but I find it agreeable. I feel it allows me most of a reflection I sorely need of mother and father. <laughs> 
You know, the music is very, very tense, you know, for some reason. Maggie, normally scars for words, was now wholly deprived of them, and Vale could barely follow the conversation, therefore said nothing. Amarella smiled softly. It is late, and the drink had, begin, had begun to wear away. The pair of you may rest your light, and don't refuse my offer, Maggie, I insist. The way back will be long, and longer still in the morning. You'll find better rest under this roof than that of a wobbly carriage. She pointed at a chest by the door and continued. There you may find blankets, and I, find I have a spare bedroom for the young miss. I trust you have your own? I have one, yes. I will return. Amarilla withdrew to another room came back with a roll of, of down for Veil to sleep on. They set themselves up before the fireplace, which had begun to die down a little. Maggie tossed on another log for them to sleep before. Maggie did not sleep as much as run over unceasing thoughts of the revelations of this evening. And by the time she had thought them over, the fire had fallen to embers and the cold of the night was then what kept her awake. And so she rose from a bundle to claim another blanket from the chest by the door. Crossing the room, she peered to her sister's bed. She found her facing window, curled about a pillow as she had when they were children. And out of the darkness behind, Vale whispered, Maggie? Maggie winced and turned and crept back to her bundle, kneeling beside the girl. I thought you were asleep. I heard you get up. I want to know if you could get me one more blanket. Yes, yes I can. And so Maggie once more got up and went to the chest grabbing two blankets. He briefly saw movement in the bedroom and stopped. She saw Amarella stir from her bed and sit up, staring at the moons, but she continued past. Are you sure she's alright? No. Why don't you talk to her? It is plain that she is under some stress, and she wishes to handle it in her own way. You don't seem so sure. I'm not. Then you should, talk, uh, then you should go talk to her. Maggie thought for a moment and the ember snapped and she spoke. Perhaps what I say will not matter. As she had done this much on her own, then. And she is strong. She'll get through this. I'm not sure how to proceed besides. Vale stared the vain woman down, seeking some expression that might reveal some ounce of what went on with her head, but nothing was apparent. You know her best, I think. Maggie nodded and tossed one the blankets over Vale. Soon Vale drifted into slumber. Maggie slept fitfully. Orange light shone directly from Maggie's closed eyes and pried them open. Slowly she sat up, seeing Vale sleep. Uh, sleep beside her, she got up with as much stealth as she could muster. She rolled a stealth check. And then, you know, got like a roll a d20, make sure her stealth check is successful. No, uh, but Maggie did not seek to wake her or her sister. She found instead some papers from her bag and took also a pen and ink, ink bottle and set herself up on the kitchen table for a quick bit of writing. Just before she had finished, Amrilla, yawning, stumbled to the main room and her footsteps had veiled up before long. Maggie jotted her last thought and folded the paper, then stood up. We've been too long here, I think. You're leaving before breakfast. I must insist we start soon, lest our trip back will take several more hours. They could hear Vale huff in annoyance. A fair point. You might make it before midday, though I doubt your stomachs will appreciate the lack of some provisions before you leave. I will fetch you something. Veil grown out from beneath the blankets, she blinked in the morning sun and smoothed her own hair, which had been flattered on one side, not like an anvil in appearance. They do have, they, they, all, they all have anime hair, you know. Amarella set before them two bags of food and filled their canteens with more of the pink juice they had tasted the previous night. She saw them off to the carriage and embraced each in turn. Ah, but one thing, for the pair of you. For the young lady, a flower of the cactus, of whose fruit you enjoyed. It's very much not the flower in your book, but I think it is pretty enough for pressing. She handed the veil a flower, whose petals were a deep red in the middle, which faded into a delicate pink. Veil smiled and gave her a bow. Thanks, it's really pretty. I thought so, and for you? She handed Maggie a letter. I expect you'll see this to mother and father. I like them to visit when they're in like, as well as you two, of course, but I think you'll bring the beer next time as payment for the debt accrued. Debt. Drinking all my red, uh, uh, drinking all my red. Vanish stuff is hard to come by, you know, especially so in this country. Fair. Until next time, my doll. 
Vale saw Maggie wince, but she regained herself and wrote directions on a little note, which she placed into the golem's head. It stirred to life, and Maggie only had just enough time to hop into the cab before it was off. They waved, and Amarilla waved back, as she receded into the landscape. Vale immediately sent into the food bag, finding it filled with some rose and jam, of which neither she could place the favor or flavor. They were pleasant enough, and when she had finished, she noticed Maggie had not touched her food. She simply stared out the window again. Uh, why'd you wince when she called you doll? Yeah, I was wondering what like, my doll was that mean. It's nothing. Is that your nickname? Maggie remained silent and let the line of questioning come to an end, though Vale thought to tease her about it later. <laughs> For now, the two were quiet again. A weird nickname to call someone a doll? I mean, uh, I don't know. Doll? I mean, not a, a literal doll, I guess. Wait, well, I'm, I'm thinking, like, do people call you know, each other dolls? I don't know, anyway. The hours passed on and on. It was past midday before they caught up to the moving city, and the golden had them back at the stable. They trudged on before the bed living crowds, neither saying much for weariness of the, of the road. And so they came upon the postman's guild, and Maggie relayed her news, and requested transfer out of the town, citing her difficulties in traversing the place and hostilities with locals. Therefore, Maggie had her new orders, and she took Vale into another carriage, pulled by another golem destined for another town and lands unknown to either of them. The journey continues. What does that mean? Is this the ending? Did, end, did the, the game end already? I assume so. Okay, that's it. Alright. Okay, so I guess that was an ending. Um, okay, again, I don't know. I, 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 don't know, I have mixed feelings again. Just like the first game, though I must say it's it is definitely in the in the art department. Definitely more finished. There's more a variety of backgrounds, and everything. Definitely got me a little bit more immersed, you know, in the world. It's an interesting world. I like it actually. Um, it just feels like the again the ending is kind of like it just ends, you know. It, it always feels like it's just chapter one. You know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be like a chapter two, but it, it's just not there. I don't know. Anyway, but um. I guess I'm not done yet though. I want to check if there's another ending I can get. So let's do that first. Let's see. So I guess maybe just load back over here. I don't know. If I can, let's see. I don't know. I don't know if there's like a uh, uh, completely different ending. But uh, let's go over here. So, all right. So starting from here, maybe if I pick different choices, maybe it'll um, be different. Let's see. There might be just be a slight difference. We'll see. All right, so this is when, uh, yeah, we, when we first went to Amarella's house and everything, you know, we, uh, we, we started to get settled in. Maggie could choose to turn to Vale instead. Maggie locked eyes with Vale, who took her meeting and interjected. I'll do it. And the girl raised her arms, closed her eyes, and held the attention of the room while she concentrated. Soon enough, a small series of sparks popped beneath the pile of logs, which then fizzled to a small flame, which soon erupted into a full fire. Umbrella clapped. My sincerest compliments to the young magician. Vale stuck on her chest and turned her head to hide her blushing. So Amarilla sliced the sausage humming herself a tuneless song. We last stopped the day. Okay, so this is like normal. This is the same. Let me just double check my thing. Did I, I remember... Did I, no, okay, don't skip that. Okay, just making sure I don't skip unseen text. Uh, go back. So if I skip like this, I'll just go back to the next option. Like so. And let me save, actually. So, see over here. So I made a different decision this way. This was after they told the story about, like, you know, she took care of the bandits and everything. They drink some some beer. And uh, they're kind of, you know, some they're, they're kind of drunk. They're talking to each other. So instead of asking how they became sisters, uh, Vale would instead take her book and go outside for some quiet. It was then Vale decided that she was having no more of these drunken ramblings, and she slipped outside. What the heck is that? <laughs> this giant monster, oh no. The night nice sky was as it had been back home, and there was a feeling of longing within her. She looked at the glittering stars and felt the cold desert breeze and heaved a sigh. She set about inspecting Amarillo's garden. The moons were bright enough that she could read her own handwriting. Vale passed the pages, each to its own memorial, and she found the song Maggie had sung and smiled, and she took a new page in her charcoal and began sketching up the plants she saw. It was some time after, later when Maggie found her. Toad, a little. Is your sister still up? Not for long. I set a couple bedrolls by the fire when you're ready. She missed you dearly. 
She needed that drink, yes, as did I. Maggie turned, yet hesitated to leave the young girl. It was fun. Why is she out in the desert? I didn't seize a chance to ask. I'll try again in the morning. She led the girl back inside where Abrella sat quietly before the fire. She turned to greet Vale. Most discourteous of me to become so taken with the drink tonight as to I would fail to entertain my guests. My apologies, Vale. It's alright. The plants are pretty. Thank you. I have work to do yet, but I'm proud of my efforts thus far. Amarella smiled softly. It is late. And the drink is going to wear away. Okay, so this, this is the same. So I'm going to skip the rest of this because I already read this. Oh, that's it? What the heck? What happened? Oh, was that the same ending, maybe? Hmm. Okay, I, I wonder if that was the same ending, actually. So if I do that... We are, oh, hold on. Because <laughs> I go so fast. I think that's the same ending. It's interesting. Okay, so, but I'm missing an ending, maybe. Hmm. Even by picking different choices, it seems we get the same ending anyway. But if we go back here, and, um, you know, when Vale asked about whether they're, why they're sisters and everything, and they, you know, explained it, and then, you know, Maggie was suspicious about, like, why, you know, Amarella was feeling like, you know, all alone here and everything. Instead of pressing her, maybe she allowed the matter to drop away? Uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. And the fear one now, perhaps it was wisdom. Maggie allowed the matter to drop and her sister cheered right up. So, also, she's transparent for some reason. I, I, I think it glitched out. Shall I fetch some wine? My cellar, rudimentary though it may be, my still house all the drink we should ever need. Perhaps we all had enough. Tis so. I would prefer to nibble a bit of our, at our dinner for a while. Perhaps our young Vale should elaborate upon uh, more upon these perilous journeys, uh, perilous adventures of yours. It was now Maggie's turn to show her unease. Vale, at least this time, read the atmosphere and likely changed the subject. Maggie said the furnaces of these halls break down. Is that what happened to yours? Indeed. Such a misfortune should be took to the furnace, and here I remain. I've come to like it here. It's peaceful, far and away from the city. It's just kind of weird that she's transparent. I, it's a glitch, but... How do, I don't know how to fix that. Anyway. It was kind of difficult to get around. Amra lit up and sparked a fear in Veil that had opened a whole line of conversation that might stretch on hours. Like when her father spoke of beer or when her mother spoke of the prices at the market. It certainly was. However could men live in such a way? The inconsist inconstance. The, the chaos. To wake up and have the streets be different from when you knew them the prior night. Utter madness. I would not change about you even when you traverse the bridges. As you continue for a time, such as the moons reached their zenith and Vale's backside began again to tire. Amarillo did not allow for the responses beyond the occasional nod, and she spoke at length until she finally saw Vale lose, lose a long yawn. But anyway, I have prattled and complained for quite some time, I see. Amarillo smiled softly. It is late and blah blah blah. The same. Okay, this is the same. And it ends the same way, damn it! Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know how you would, like, get a different ending. Apparently, there's a different ending in this game. That's what it says at the store page. But maybe I've I already got it, or... I'm not sure, it's weird. Hmm. Oh! Okay, this is, this is different. Alright, okay, so this is a new scene. Uh, when was this? Okay. Alright, all right, all right. okay, so I think... Okay, so... After going through the, the options again, I think what happens is that you gotta choose choices that balance, you know, favor between um, Vale and Amarella. You know, if you choose all the options related to Vale, it just ends the same way. If you choose all the options related to Amarella, it also ends the same way. You get different scenes though, but you know, it generally just ends the same way. So I think if you choose to let at least the way I did it, you, you let Vale uh, light the fire and then, you know, in the next scene you and then the next scene you um, talk about why they're sisters and then press the matter. Then you get this scene, apparently. Which, I don't know if it's significantly different, but I guess, it, you know. I guess we'll see. Anyway. So this is when, uh, this is during nighttime, you know. And I guess they were like having trouble with sleeping and everything, right? Maggie looked to the doorway. She held her gaze there and then she got up. And then, okay, I, I assume Vale, uh, Vale, uh, Ask her to, you know, talk to her, to her sister. Anyway. 
I just want to give context to it, you know, because I skip skip around, you know, back and forth. The Van Lynch woman knocked at the doorway and Amarella st- turned with a start. Trouble sleeping? Yes. Too much to drink as I have. Too much to think, actually. Well, you're always one more of thought and action than words. Maggie sat beside her sister and stared out the moons, searching for a way to begin what she wanted to say, the way she had done since first she laid down in front of the fire. Do you regret me as a sister? Why would you why would why ever would you say that? What you said tonight about your identity being tied to me was that some sign of regret? It was in a way, but never because of you, Maggie. If I could grow up with you once more, twice more, and thrice a thousand times more, I would do so happily. It is not your burden to bear the misgivings of your elder sister. Misgivings are my job. Yet you have regrets. Regrets that I am in the minds of others and an elder sister more than I am my own person, if you understand. And your solution is exile. Amarella paused and drew a deep breath. I've always cherished my own company, Maggie. I understand though I love you and I love mother and father, it is others I wish separations from. I find the company of most folk bothersome at worst, exhausting at best. I oh, yes, a true introvert, <laughs> you know, I can relate. A feeling that seems to have compounded since living in the city, though I had originally come here to disappear to the mass. But here alone and under the stars, in the silence, I am nothing. I am not Amarella of the house, Tuxfard. I am not Amarella of the barkeep. I'm a rock of the land, I'm a shrub upon the earth. I disappear in the truest sense of the word. Men, they all cling together and form society. They collect into great and stinking cities and gossip and grow up about and tell tales and falsehoods to escape their moral- mortalities. Distractions forget they are merely motes of dust before the march of time. I guess just, just get instantly nihilistic. It is folly and these distractions are tiresome. I feel I must behave as a doll tied to strings. Out here, though, there is no civilization to hide my fear of any significance. One simply becomes a landscape, and you already do not matter. It is honest. There are no reassurances or platitudes. There is life where there is not. I find comfort in this. Perhaps unusual as it may be, the solitude does give me good. I have never slept better, save this night, and I found again my love of gardening. At least to refresh my humanity, I will remain here, and I say again there is no fault of yours, a mother and father. Slowly, Maggie nodded. I suppose. I suppose I understand some of what you say. In my wanderings, I often felt a calm when I'm alone. But I always had a companion in training. And after complaining, I suppose I yearn for such again. It is well to have someone to share words with and to keep your back covered in the sinister lands. And I suppose in that way, I did not realize you could be different. I'm rather stretched and fell back into her mattress. A shock to growing up, isn't it? To find those you grew up on are not of a like mind after all. Maggie fell back the same way, indeed. In silence they lay there, staring at the ceiling. For the first time this night, Maggie had a clear head and thought she could fall asleep like this, but Amarella ended the silence. And so you came upon young Vale on her mission to locate a mysterious flower. She's to be your companion on the road? Until she finds her flower, yes. And it's not for the desire of children that you carry her along. Maggie elbowed her sister in the rib, which elicited a pain grunt and a little giggle afterward. But for how long will she travel with you? Can't say. Then if ever the day comes, do see her home, will you? I may. Then I dare say drowsiness will soon take me off as well. The bed is not large enough for two, and certainly not a full-grown vain woman. Maggie heaved herself up and re-entered the main room where Vale snoozed by the dying embers. She lifted up one of the blankets she had grabbed earlier and gingerly placed it over the sleeping girl. Maggie too was asleep soon enough. Okay, so a little extra scene there. You know, a little, 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 uh, heart to heart. Orange light shone directly upon Maggie's closed eyes and pried them open. Slowly, she sat up and seeing Veil sleep beside, beside her, she got out as much herself as she could muster. But Maggie did not seek to wake her or her sister. On the papers, and then, okay, we saw this already. Mm-hmm. Wrote a little letter. Too long here. You're looking for breakfast before breakfast. But since we leave, da 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 da. Okay. More, one more thing. A little flower for you, little girl, and you a letter from mother and father. Until next time.
and then they go off to the golem. I I, I just don't want to skip too too much in case there, there's like new con new like dialogue or whatever. Vale spoke up. Maggie? Hmm? Could I have some paper? I want to write a letter. Of course. Okay, this is new. Maggie pulled a sheaf of papers from her bag and Vale took them. Once again, neither spoke and all the sound could be heard was a scratching of charcoal on the paper and the clunk of wheels and the groaning of the carriage walls. When Vale completed her letter, she took the flower Amarella had given her and pressed it carefully against the clean paper, putting it softly within her letter, which she then handed to Maggie. Maggie then showed her the proper way to address it and handed her some sealing wax and stamped it once complete. Vale beheld her complete letter in reverence before handing it off to the postman. Well done. My first letter. First of many. The hours passed on and on. It was midday before they caught up to the moving city and the golden had them back at the stable. They trudged on through the bedlam crowds and saying much of the world. Came on the postman's guild and Maggie relayed her news. At a request to transfer of the town, Saigu had difficulties in traversing the place and hostility of the locals. Therefore, Maggie had new orders, she took the veil into another carriage, followed them by another golem, destined for another town and lands unknown to either of them. I, I guess that's it, you know. It seems like it ends the same way. As in like, and then their journey continues, you know, it's like, that's it. Kinda ends abruptly, you know. I feel like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's just like, Next time, you know, next time on Dragon Ball Z, you know, it's like, it really is just like one episode, you know. It, I guess it's like a pilot episode, I guess, is what it's supposed to be. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's meant to be like just a short story, right? But I don't know, usually in a short story, I mean, it's, it obviously it implies that there's more journeys for them to make and everything, but uh, I don't know. In a short story, usually, even if there's a, a bigger story that is probably going to happen, you know, that you can imagine, uh, usually, it just it still feels like a conclusive thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, mean, I think it's just me. But I, I, I feel like the last line should be like, and thus, you know, there should be like one more final thing that would be like, and thus, the end of the... And then, I, I don't know. I don't know how you would describe it. Like, the, thus, the, they finish their letters and and the journey, they continue to like bond over in the next year. I'm the same thing anyway. You know, it's like to be continued. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I've complaining too much. Anyway, so I guess that's it. I assume that's the other ending. The, 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 the page said that it was a different ending. I'm not entirely sure if that was the different ending because, you know, ends of the same screen. Yeah, I know, you know, that's what it is, actually. I wish that, I wish it ended with a CG, you know? That's why I wish it would end like the end with a CG, you know, instead of like, the journey continues. Like, it makes it feel incomplete even when it isn't. Because it is like a, I mean, you know, obviously it's uh, about a postman in this world and their sidekick, they're delivering letters, you know, in a, in a fantasy, like, um, medieval, late medieval-ish renaissance magic world. And while part of their job is like delivering letters, what the real story was about, you know, knowing the characters and meeting Amarella and her story and everything, right? And uh, their interactions, basically. That's the real story, right? But um, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I wish there was just one, one final CG. A small one, just a small CG. It could, they, they could even be chibis, you know, it's fine. Just, to, just like a definitive DN, you know, instead of like, to be continued, you know, it just feels like uh unsatisfying when you do that i don't know what it is it's just a small thing really it's not even that big of a deal but it just makes it feel unsatisfying because the story is over right the story the love the story of the of their like relationship that's already that's done you know but it, and it should be like the end you know but it doesn't say the end so it just feels unsatisfying but anyway i'm i'm rambling overall though um again i, I assume i got everything but oh uh, so i think i'm done but overall uh i like it you know i, I like the art uh, I don't know where the music comes from. I can check the credits, I guess. I think the credits, like, I assume the music is public domain, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Interesting credits, by the way. It's just drawings. Also, I can't read this. It's too white. I can't read it in the background. I, I guess that's not important. I guess. These people. Music by these people? Okay, no, maybe the music is uh, custom. I'm not sure. I think I heard the music. I think it's the same music from the last game, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I could be wrong, though. But, um, yeah, 
overall i do like again the art style is very very is very good looking you know this type definitely has more variety in terms of the backgrounds and everything so it is a finished i feel like it's a finished product in terms of the art and the visuals and everything uh the writing is fine too i found it a little bit stiff at times though i don't know why i mean maybe it makes sense but like it just feels like sometimes people in the story speak too stiffly you know especially with uh uh amarella and um maggie but maggie makes sense because she seems like a like a very serious person you know in general but i imagine she would loosen up a little bit you know i don't know she she's a little formal but whatever it doesn't matter too much um I don't know, i'm trying to think I, I i do like the world building the pacing i don't know what it is about the pacing i don't know for me i don't know why i always complain about the pacing but i felt a little slow at the beginning i don't know what it is but um but definitely i mean this is just a slice of life story so it's not that no, it's not gonna be like action packed or anything but i felt like i don't know i felt like it should be a little bit more foreshadowing in the beginning you know instead of like i mean they, they they do this already you know so it's not uh it's not like they don't do it but i i i wish they did a bit well, was a bit more subtle in terms of like explaining because you know you don't have to explain literally everything you know when you introduce people into a world um just a little bit you know just give an idea because instead of like and this the city works like this and blah 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 and blah 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 you know as a character the character will already know how the city works you don't have to explain that because it becomes more like a wikipedia article you know when you try to explain every single aspect of the world and everything uh, which i mean might be cool i guess maybe you're into like that kind of thing i don't know you'd be like reading like a historical textbook but uh I don't know, pretty personally, I don't like that kind of thing where like it explained literally everything because it felt kind of slow at the, at the beginning. I don't know. It just felt too, a lingered too much on like trying to explain the world and everything. Even though I do like the world building, you could just like, you know, just a few lines here and there. And because again, because you don't need to do the thing where you basically just just explain everything to the to the reader, I feel like. Just let, let them connect dots. You don't need to like describe literally everything. Um but anyway that, that, i don't know that's just a small complaint i don't know again i'm not like a professional writer so i uh, maybe i don't know anything maybe i'm just a dummy maybe i'm a dummy anyway um hmm. i guess that's it yeah i don't know what else to say but that's what i felt about the writing basically i just felt like it was a bit slow at times overall it's, it's, it's like it's just nice nice it's just you know it's a bit of conflict there i guess in, t in terms of understanding amarilla's like uh, reasons and whatnot you know there's some momentum in the plot in that sense you know i like it because even the thing is even if you have like a slice of life kind of story or basically you know you don't you fight giant monsters or anything but there's there still should be like some kind of conflict right some some kind of motivation and momentum of the characters wanting to do something and some conflict right usually a lot of slice of life stories especially the ones that are uh you know drama based because there are like drama satellite stories especially in anime where um you know that's kind of the the, the deal you know people dealing with uh, emotions and problems you know interpersonal issues and whatnot you know it makes it more interesting that way instead of like again fighting monsters you're i guess you're fighting with words or whatever i don't know something like that anyway but yeah again um I must say it's uh yeah it's, uh, I'm, I'm rambling so much but but basically uh, i just want to say that uh this one canvas colors definitely uh better than their first game you know yeah def definitely an upgrade um is what i'll say i don't know if they're gonna make more but i might be inclined to check even more you know if they ever make another visual novel or anything similar maybe maybe not who knows but I definitely am interested in seeing them improve you know assuming they, they 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 should improve i don't know I'm, I'm i'm saying a lot of complaints and whatnot but or like critiques or whatever i don't even know they're correct this is just what i feel i'm i'm not like uh, i'm not saying for sure what you should or shouldn't do you know this is just what i feel but you know i want i want to see them make something better you know uh, not necessarily longer necessarily but like something just more you know something you like tie in the bow you know something some more something more and that's the thing i don't know i, I would i mean maybe it's just in the name but like unfinished circle you know it just feels something is always just missing you know just some just something conclusive as, as i said before it's just like just give me like the end you know that'd be nice instead of like the journey continues but like it never actually continues because the vision novel was finished right but uh, anyway and, and, and that'll be it for i, I guess that's, that's all i'll say 
or this because I say I've been like just rambling so much. Um, but um, that'd be it for canvas colors in the moving scene. I, I just have a lot to say. I don't know because I, I I want this to be good, you know. So I want this to be better. I want the developer to be better. So that's why I say so much. But not that my thought, my opinions doesn't even matter. But but that'd be that'd be it for this game. Uh, let me just say, if you're on YouTube, um, if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch, so check me out over there if you're interested. You can also find other playthroughs on the channel if you want to look for those. And yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then.